Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about mangalitsa pork. Primarily, we're gonna talk about one muscle, and that is this top muscle between the spine and the shoulder blade. That sits right up here on top of the pig. One reason they call it eating high on the hog. The cobra muscle is a muscle that is often in your Boston butt. You can buy a Boston butt at the store and sometimes you can find the cobra muscle in it, which is good. But if you raise your own pigs, you're gonna to wanna to know how to do this major if you have mangalitsas because mangalitsa is a red meat, as you see right here, extremely beautiful red meat. You do not wanna grind this cut. This is the absolute best steak I've ever eaten. It's better than the pork chops on a mangalitsa pig. We're behind that shoulder blade, so we're just gonna try to pry it out. Laying it off of that shoulder blade from underneath. Turn it back over. Just like that. Now we can set this to the side and focus on our copa muscle. Now getting into the shoulder blade is a little bit aggressive on a copa steak because it don't really go in the shoulder blade, but I hate to lose some of my copa muscle to that. I don't want to err on the side of taking out my copa. Definitely want to err on the side of more than enough. Now we're just gonna Cut this cap fat off, just like this. That'll be used for sausage making later. Now we're gonna trim off this dry end of the copa. Trim that up. This mangalitsa fat is unbelievably good. Unbelievably good. You don't wanna throw that out. Save that. You can use it for anything that you want that is fat grease based you can eat it plain i mean it's unbelievable how good it is so at this point now i've got myself a little thing here that needs to be trimmed up that's just where the shoulder blade went in I'm going to trim that up a little bit that'll be used for sausage later now let's let's take a look at this center cut steak just going to cut right through there the most unbelievable piece of meat you can put in your mouth. The marbling on a copa steak is just something that you just, oh my goodness, you can't find a steak anywhere any better. This right here, what I got in my hand, would be considered a $100 steak. If you were to get that in a restaurant in Nashville, in Dallas, wherever, you ain't even going to find one like this in a little little city, you're not gonna find this. But if you raise your own, you can find it. And it won't cost you no hundred dollars each. You can find copa steak in any pork, but they're not all gonna be quite to this quality. This is top of the top of the line right here. I want you to look at that. People go crazy about Wagyu beef and how wonderful Wagyu beef is. This right here would give Wagyu beef a run for its money. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Not all of them are of the same quality. When you get down here towards the end, you've got a little bit more loin in it from the back strap muscle. These would be considered the primest of the prime. You wouldn't pay $100 for this one, but when you're doing your own and you've got five kids, and they're going to be eating a bunch of it. Yeah, you definitely won't, don't want to throw those end pieces out. So, the next scene that you will see will be us getting these out, frying them up, and trying them out. All right, folks, here we are with our copa steaks. It's been a couple days. I'm telling you what, I just love the looks of them. All marbled up. Just, woo, unbelievable. So, here's what you do. Treat them as you would a very high quality ribeye steak, something along that line. Unbelievable, the quality of this. It doesn't take just a lot of stuff to make it taste good. All you wanna do is bring out the flavor that's already there. So all we're gonna do is simply salt and pepper and a little garlic powder. All right, the kids knew I needed butter for this recipe and they took some cream from the cow. 
made me some butter, skillet's hot, here we go. This is unsalted butter. Unsalted butter will not burn as fast as salted butter. But as you can tell, this is very hot. So we're gonna get a move on this real quick like I'm taking them to lay these babies in here. Just like this. Now these are gonna also continue to make grease because there's a lot of fat in these steaks. That's all we're gonna fit in this skillet. We'll have to do another one here in a minute. What is that, Mary? Beets and carrots and potatoes. I didn't time it and I'll probably have to flip it back again later anyway, but I like multiple. I'm not a one and doneer. I like to go at it for a while. Now I'm gonna show you folks that have the inconvenience of having electric or gas stoves, the convenience of having a wood stove. If you want it hotter, remove the eye, instant blast of heat. to lay it on it here. Where are you going, kid? Go get your steak knife. Steak knife, I got you one here, kid. Oh, yeah. This? Yeah. Wait a minute, that's yours. Nope, I got one. Oh. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, the good thing about these steaks, folks, they are boneless. Yeah. It's too tender just to poke and hold up there. It's a little more than medium rare, but it's still a little bit pink in the middle. And it's all, absolutely all marbled up with that fat. Try your bite, Kevin. Okay. Did you already put one in your mouth? Mm. Is that good or what? That is good. Meat, fat, meat, fat, meat. A lot of fat, a little bit of meat. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that is really good. Cups butter, folks. This is the one cut on the pig that really makes it where I want to grow some out to around 400 pounds. This one was 372. The one I killed just for it was 382. Raise them together. Mm -hmm. What's that mean, Mmm. Mmm. Just go to your local butcher and ask for a copa steak, and if they don't know what it is, it's basically the same thing as a chuck eye steak on a beef. It's just on a pork. It's on a pig, so it's copa steak. That's a really good flavor. Yeah, it is amazing. Some beautiful, beautiful steak right there. The only thing is it's not, well, it's steak, it's pork. Unbelievable that you can have pork that marble and that red meat that is just like a, Ribeye steak. If you like your meat marbled up with some fat streaks through it, you're gonna love it. Mary likes to roast the beets, carrots, taters. She also likes to roast onions and squash when she's got them. She's not here today. She's working at a local greenhouse, so I told her them jobs ain't what they're all cracked up to be. If you get a chance to get you a cup of mussel, I suggest you make some three quarter inch steaks out of it. Grill them, fry them, however you like to do your steaks. And they'll be absolutely delicious. So we're gonna get on out of here. Caleb's gonna have him another bite. But we're gonna go, hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video. <laughs>